Chapter 24 The next morning, Thomas found himself sitting in a chair, worried and anxious, sweating, facing eleven other boys. They were seated in chairs arranged in a semicircle around him. Once settled, he realized they were the keepers. To his chagrin, that meant Galley was among them. One chair directly in front of Thomas stood empty. He didn't need to be told that it was Albie's. They sat in a large room of the homestead that Thomas hadn't been in before. Beside the chairs, there was no other furniture except for a small table in the corner. The walls were made of wood, as, the, as was the floor, and it didn't look like anyone had ever attempted to make the place look inviting. There were no windows, the room smelled of mildew and old books. Thomas wasn't cold, but shivered all the same. He was at least relieved that Newt was there. He sat in the chair to the right of Albie's empty seat. In place of our leader, sick in bed, I declare the gathering begun, he said with a subtle roll of his eyes, as if he hated anything approaching formality. As you all know, the last few days have been bloody crazy, and quite a bit seems to be centered around our green bean, Tommy, seated before us. Thomas's face flushed with embarrassment. He's not the greenie anymore, Galley said, his scratchy voice so low and cruel it was almost comical. He's just a rule breaker now. This started off a rumbling of murmurs and whispers, but Newt shushed them. Thomas suddenly wanted to be far as, as far from the room as possible. Galley, Newt said, try to keep some bug in order here. If you're going to blabber your shucked mouth every time I say something, you can go ahead and bloody leave, because I'm not in a very cheerful mood. Thomas wished he could cheer it. Excuse me. Thomas wished he could cheer at that. Galley folded his arms and leaned back in the chair, the scowl on his face so forced that Thomas almost laughed out loud. He was having a harder and harder time believing that he had terrified he'd been terrified of this guy just a day earlier. He seemed silly, even pathetic now. Newt gave Galley a hard stare, then continued. Glad we got that out of the way. Another roll of the eyes. Reason we're here is because almost every loving kid in the glade has come up to me in the last day or two boo-hooing about Thomas or begging to take his bloody hand in marriage. We need to decide what we're going to do with him. Galley leaned forward, but Newt cut him off before he could say anything. You'll have your chance, Galley, one at a time. And Tommy, you're not allowed to say a bugging thing until we ask you to. Got that? He waited for a nod of consent from Thomas, who gave it reluctantly, then pointed to the kid in the chair on the far right. Zart the fart, you start. There were a few snickers as Zart, the quiet big guy who washed over the gardens, shifted in his seat. He looked to Thomas more out of place than a carrot on a tomato plant. Well, Zart began, his eyes darting around like all, almost like he was waiting for someone else to tell him what to say. I don't know. He broke one of our most important rules. We can't just let people think that's okay. He paused and looked down at his hands, rubbing them together. But then again, he's changed things. Now we know he can, we can survive out there. We can beat the grievers. Relief flooded Thomas. He had someone else on his side. He made a promise to himself to be extra nice to Zart. Oh, give me a break, Galley spurted. I bet Minnow's the one that actually got rid of the stupid things. Galley, shut your hole, Newt yelled. Standing for effect this time, once again, Thomas felt like cheering. I'm the bloody chair right here, and if I hear one more bugging word out of turn from you, I'll be arranging another banishing for your sorry butt. Please, Galley whispered sarcastically, the ridiculous scowl returning as he slouched back into his chair again. Newt sat down and motioned to Zart. Is that it? Any official recommendations? Zart shook his head. Okay, you're next, Frypan. The cook smiled through his beard and sat up straighter. Shank's got more guts than I've fried up and from every pig and cow in the last year. He paused as if expecting a laugh, but none came. How stupid is this? He saves Galleon's lives, kills a couple grievers, and we're sitting here yapping about what to do with him? As Chuck would say, this is a pile of clunk. Thomas wanted to walk over and shake Frypan's hand. He'd just said exactly what Thomas himself had been thinking about all this. So what are you recommending? Newt asked. Frypan folded his arms. Put him on the freaking council and have him train us everything he did out there. Voices erupted from every direction and it took Newt a minute and a half to calm everyone down. Thomas winced. 
Frypan had gone too far with that recommendation, almost invalidating his well-stated opinion of the whole mess. All right, writing her down, Newt said, as he did just that, scribbling on a notepad. Now, everyone keep their bloody mouth shut. I mean it. You know the rules. No idea is unacceptable. And you'll all have your say when we vote on it. He finished writing and pointed to a third member of the council, a kid Thomas hadn't met yet, with black hair and a freckly face. I don't really have an opinion, he said. What? Newt said angrily. A lot of good it did for you to choose you for the council, then. Sorry, I honestly don't, he shrugged. If anything, I agree with Frypan, I guess. Why punish a guy for saving someone's life? So you do have an opinion, is that it? Newt insisted, pencil in hand. The kid nodded, and Newt scribbled a note. Thomas was feeling more and more relieved. It seemed like most of the keepers were for him, not against him. Still, he was having a hard time just sitting there. He desperately wanted to speak on his own behalf. But he forced himself to follow Newt's orders and keep quiet. Newt was acne-covered. Next was acne-covered Winston, keeper of the bloodhouse. I think he should be punished. No offense, Greeny. But Newt, you're the only one harping about order. If we don't punish him, we'll set a bad example. He broke our number one rule. Okay, Newt said, writing on his pad. So you're recommending punishment? What kind? I think you should be put in the slammer for a week with only bread and water. We need to make sure everyone else knows that about it so they don't get any ideas. Galley clapped, earning a scowl from Newt. Thomas's heart fell just a bit. Two more keepers spoke, one for Frypan's idea, one for Winston's. Then it was Newt's turn. I agree with a lot of you. He should be punished, but then we need to figure out a way to use him. I'm reserving my recommendation until I hear everyone out. Next. Thomas hated all this talk about punishment, even more than he hated having to keep his mouth shut. But deep inside, he couldn't bring himself to disagree. As odd as it seemed about what he had accomplished, he had broken a major rule. Down the line they went. Some thought he should be praised, some thought he should be punished, or both. Thomas could barely listen anymore, anticipating the comments from the last two keepers, Galley and Minho. The latter had, hadn't said a word since Thomas entered the room. He just sat there, drooped in his chair, looking like he hadn't slept in a week. Galley went first. I think I've made my opinions pretty clear already. Great, Thomas thought. Then just keep your mouth shut. Good that, Newt said with another, with yet another roll of the eyes. Go then, Minnow. No, Galley yelled, making a couple of keepers jump in their seats. I still want to say something. Then bloody say it, Newt replied. It made Thomas feel a little better that the temporary council chair despised Galley almost as much as he did. Though Thomas wasn't that afraid of him anymore, he still hated the guy's guts. Just think about it, Galley began. This slint head comes up in the box, acts all confused and scared. A few days later, he's running around the maze with grievers, acting like he owns the place. Thomas shrank in his chair, hoping that others hadn't been thinking anything like that. Galley continued his rant. I think it was all an act. How could he have done what he did out there in just a few days? I ain't buying it. What are you trying to say, Galley? Newt asked. How about having a bloody point? I think he's a spy for the people that put us here. Another uproar, uproar exploded in the room. Thomas could do nothing but shake his head. He just didn't get how Galley could come up with all these ideas. Newt finally calmed everyone down, but Galley wasn't finished. We can't trust this shank, he continued. Day after he shows up, a psycho girl comes, spouting off that things are going to change, clutching that freaky note. We find a dead griever. Thomas conveniently finds himself in the maze for the night, then tries to convince everyone he's a hero. Well, neither Minho nor anyone else actually saw him doing anything out there in the vines. How do we know it was Greeny who tied Albie up there? Galley paused. No one said a word for several seconds, and panic rose inside Thomas's chest. Could they actually believe what Galley was saying? He was anxious to defend himself and almost broke the silence for the first time. But before he could get a word in, Galley was talking again. There's too many weird things going on, and it all started with a shuck face and greeny showing up. And he just happens to be the first person to survive a night out in the maze. Something ain't right. And until we figure it out, I officially re recommend that we lock his butt in the slammer. For a month, and then have another review. More rumblings broke out. 
and Newton wrote something on his pad, shaking his head the whole time, which gave Thomas a tinge of hope. Finished, Captain Galley? Quit being such a smart aleck, Newt. He spat, his face flushing red. I'm dead serious. How can we trust the shank after less than a week? Quit voting me down before you even think about what I'm saying. For the first time, Thomas felt a little empathy for Galley. He did have a point about how Newt was treating him. Galley was a keeper, after all. But I still hate him, Thomas thought. Fine, Galley. I'm sorry. We heard you. We all consider your recommendation. Are we done? Yes, I'm done. And I'm right. With no more words from Galley, Newt pointed to Minho. Go ahead, last but not least. Thomas was elated that it was finally Minho's turn. Surely he'd defend him to the end. Minho stood quickly, taking everyone off guard. I was out there. I saw what this guy did. He stayed strong while I turned into a panty-wearing chicken. No blabbing on and on like Galley. I want to save my recommendation and be done with it. Thomas held his breath, wondering what he would say. Good that, Newt said. Tell us then. Minno looked at Thomas. I nominate this shank I nominate this shank to replace me as keeper of the runners. <laughs>